Okay, so I've already gotten a couple things started. I have preheated our oven to 220 degrees Celsius. I have our baking sheet here with a silicone baking mat on that. And I've dusted a little bit of flour on top just to make sure the scones don't stick to it. And I've started to put together our ingredients. Now in order to make six scones, the recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of self-raising flour and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So I've sifted that together and now we're going to add in the sugar, the chilled butter, and a pinch of salt. Which I've just cut into these small cubes here. And we're going to use our hands to mix it up until it resembles coarse breadcrumbs. So when you're done, there should be some butter pieces left in there. We do want to still see some of the butter visible. And I hope your fingers are strong because <laughs> working with the chilled butter, it can tire out your fingers a little bit. So we've kind of got that coarse breadcrumb look there. So we're gonna stop there. Which the Cape Gooseberries, I have sliced them into smaller pieces and we're just gonna to toss them all in here. And then we're just gonna give it a quick toss up with our hands just to get it all mixed in there. Then I've just whisked up one and a half eggs. Now last weekend I did try these out and I thought that two eggs was a bit too much. So I've just cut that down to one and a half eggs this week and we're gonna see how it goes. And we're gonna continue to whisk this together. Then we are going to take our egg and milk mixture and just pour it into the rest of our ingredients. And I'm just going to continue by hand mixing this up until it's well combined. Probably should have floured my fingers before I did this. Oh well. If you find that the mixture is too dry, which I haven't found that at all with these, um, you can add a little bit more milk, but from what I found, it comes out just perfectly, like very sticky and ready to go right on there. Also, if you want to cut these out into nice shapes, that's completely fine and up to you. Circles, triangles, whatever. I tend to just take clumps and plop them onto the sheets to make just like an oddly shaped round-ish scone. So that's what we're going to do now. We have our mixture. I'm just going to take this and separate it into six pieces and put it on our baking sheet. Before we put them into the oven, I'm just going to brush them with a little bit of milk just to make them brown on the top when they're baking. We're just putting those scones in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. And honestly, it is so easy to put together these scones. I was able to whip them up really quickly. They cook really quickly and it's a nice little breakfast or morning tea meal.
So this is the final product here. And I, the thing I love about just kind of plopping them onto the tray is that they get these nice little crispy bits around the edges and on the top. So I've got my scone ready to eat. Um, I guess I should call everyone else in to eat breakfast as well. All right, guys, breakfast. Okay, breakfast is done and nobody else wanted to be on camera because it's so early in the morning, but everyone liked the scones. This second attempt was better than my first attempt of the scones. And I think that was because I let them brown a little bit more on the top. I made sure that I didn't fully mix in the butter into the batter and I made sure to only use one and a half eggs instead of two eggs. When I used the two eggs, it made it a little bit too eggy tasting, but this way it was perfect. And when you cook those Cape gooseberries, it gives the Cape gooseberries a whole new flavor. So when you eat them straight from the garden, they have a little bit of a sour taste, but when you cook those up, oh my gosh, it's such a nice, sweet flavor. They're so good. So I'll have to find some other recipes to cook with the Cape gooseberries. But that's it for today, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.